How exactly should Steven prove a point? Uh, I don't know. I can't think of any way. What about having three of the same figure? Mm, nah. Hello Collectors, it's Steven once more with another SH Monster Arts review, and we're gonna take a look at the Super Mecha Godzilla. Another repaint in the SH Monster Arts line with some retooling, Mecha Godzilla is now packed with a Garuda to form Super Mecha Godzilla. However, this Bandai Premium Web Shop exclusive trades in accessories from the previous two separate releases for a shinier look. But was this trade-off worth it, or did recent poor quality control catch up? Well, my triplets should be a hint, so let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. So I have three of these guys, and we're going to take a look at the first one that I got. No, I'm not keeping all three, it's just a return situation where I have to return them by X date, and they sent me a new one ASAP. So... I had all three at once, and I had the joy of taking a look at each one, and I took some pictures. Anyway, like I said before, we're going to take a look at one. Super Mecha Godzilla from a distance looks nice, but there are some quality control issues in the paint that are kind of subtle, which won't bother most, especially when it's up on the shelf. But in general, if you get one that's fine, the most you'll get is some pulling and paint in areas that's not a big issue. One of the notable new features of Mechagodzilla would be the eyes. Instead of a dull orange, we now have a bright yellow, and it looks awesome. When it looks good, that is. We can actually see the details in the eyes. The panel lines on the cheeks are real frickin' neato, too, and the details are captured wonderfully. But moving down, there's a fingerprint in the paint on the neck. Moving down even more, this is where things start to go downhill. We have little miscellaneous black marks and scratches in the wonderful silver paint application, and I'm not being sarcastic there, it is really great, and it just looks dirty in some parts, like here, on the abdomen. The arms are just fine though, and that's consistent across all three, but the hands have an uneven texture to them. They kinda look like they're from a suit, and not necessarily from a mech. To be honest, it's kind of in the nitpicking territory, but it might bother some so... Yeah, I, I guess it's worth mentioning. However, what is absolutely worth mentioning would be the dorsal plates. There are some spots where there would be pulling of paint in some areas like I mentioned before, but there are some spots where there are scuff marks on the tips. Just not good in general. You'll also notice some issues on the thrusters on this one too. Plus this big old scratch on the right side of his back. Legs kinda sorta work well enough, but keep in mind the feet are die cast, and this one already has paint flaking. Yeah, not good. You'll actually see another concern of mine in the comparisons with the original Mechagodzilla release later. Now here's the interesting part. We're gonna take a quick look at all three of the Super Mechagodzillas I was er, graced with, if you will. The second one I have here, it has similar issues with paint pulling and scratches and die cast paint flaking, but the big issue here, look at the leg. The paint is pretty much wiped off on this part of the thigh. That's because there's no protective plastic when in the box, so while it was moving around, the paint had a chance to rub off. We have random issue with paint damage out of the box too, which isn't nice to say, and it happens on them all. And there's no reason for this type of damage, especially when the figure is not being handled by anyone aside from the factory workers. And then look at the heads. Two out of three have way too much dry brushing. Silver paint on the eyes? Come on. Then we have excess spray on random parts. This Super Mecha Godzilla? What went wrong on the quality control here? There are so many different things that went wrong. Just look at the pics in front of you. They speak for themselves. And if you think there's just variation in how the figures look, oh boy, you're wrong. So Mechagodzilla's articulation is basically identical to the original release with only some minor changes. And I'm not talking about the hips. So what do we got here? First and foremost, the jaw, the mouth, opens and closes on a hinge. Hi. 
Now, something to take note of, let's cut to the first Mecha Godzilla that I got that I was going to show you for the articulation section. As you can clearly see here, it looks like the jaw was on some sort of spring configuration, and that's what I was going to show you for this review. But as it turns out, the other two that I got did not have this feature. So what exactly was going on there, I don't know. Was it a broken hinge, or was it an act of God? Who knows? Who cares? But I don't have that one anymore. Yeah, definitely a quality control issue of some sort of weird thing going on. But that was a one-off, or maybe it wasn't. So, back to the Mecha Godzilla we're going to be looking at here. So from there, we do have the neck configuration, which is new, but it's also slightly concerning. So what do we have? So we have the normal swivel that you kind of got to put some ass behind to get it to turn initially. And then, you know, after you get it to turn, you, you get it to turn a little easier. Uh, it seems like every couple of days, the first turn to get it to actually spin around is pretty hard. And then after that, it just works fine enough. It kind of builds up rust, if you will. Not actual rust, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, but after you get that first turn, then it likes to work. So to accommodate the flying mode, instead of giving us an alternate neck piece like the original, we now get a hinge configuration system. So this way, you can get Mechagodzilla to look up, which is pretty cool, because now you can get Mechagodzilla to actually look up. So that's pretty nice to have. And then you just got to watch the dorsal plates that are there, so this way you don't scratch the paint, or you actually break off the dorsal plates. I know that that happened to someone. Don't be stupid, kids. Anyway, let's continue on down. So we have a multi-ball joint system here in the shoulders. The arms at the shoulders, they're on ball joints, but that whole system plugs into the body at the shoulders on ball joints too. Or maybe it's a hinge. I don't know what's going on here, but you can move them at the base. Let's zoom in so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. And let's bring it in a little closer. So you see that sort of silver gunmetal part? Yeah, that part moves, and you can kind of get it to move up and down. And then there's a ball joint there that you can move the shoulders about. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, despite some engineering changes to the articulation, they did not accommodate Mechagodzilla's arms for hinges, so that's about as far out as the arms go, and there is no bicep swivel. So you're gonna have to make do with just those ball joints. Double hinge elbows. Swivel hinge wrists. And since the hands plug in on pegs, we get uh, basically no use out of them because they're swivels too. So that's pretty neat. Ab crunch on a ball joint. For some reason, it seems like we don't get as much movement out of this one compared to the original Mechagodzilla. At least that is the case for me. Side to side, forward and back, bobbles all the way around, uh, app crunch and waist joint does the same thing. Now, here is something that a lot of people are wondering what's going on here. We have the hip joints. We have this covering here, and people are saying that the hip joints are completely new, and yeah. So um, I'm going to debunk that right here and right now. Nope, not true. That is just a cover for the joints so this way you don't see the ball jointed connection like you would on the first mecha godzilla release however there is one slight change to the engineering in the hips this joint here let's see if i can get this one to move there's a hinge that moves forward and back you can sort of see that ball joint moving now this is one of the reasons why the original mecha godzilla release had unstable uh, legs because the original connection there had hinges that moved up and down instead of forward and back. And since they moved up and down, that caused stress because we have die cast parts down here and that caused instability. So that is just a cover. It's not 
newly designed, engineered, no. So anyway, like you saw, the hips, they have hinges that allow the legs to move forward and back, but they're very tight. On the first Mecha Godzilla that I had, they were basically frozen in place. I had to use the dish soap technique, which there should be a card popping up right about here to take you to that technique. And the ball joints were basically super tight and they squeaked and they were going to break. So um, I had to use that too. So the legs go out about that far go in about that far and they're on ball joints so you can move them forward and back do be careful of paint rub and they are very tight this time around so even at the ball joint connection like my normal mecha godzilla it really can't do that so that's that's pretty cool double hinge knees the ankle guard is on a hinge now we have a double ball joint connection here in the ankle we have a ball joint up in here in the lower portion of the leg that you can move around then we have a ball joint that connects in the foot at the ankle. There you go. Super duper tight. Like you, you got to put some ass behind it in order to get it to move. And there you go to get the ankle rocker movement. So you can get Mecha Godzilla to get ankle rocker movement there. That may be what you get this foot here the first couple times you fiddle around with it but trust me you got to put some effort into it and you can get that ankle rocker movement to work then obviously we get a toe hinge which can move down as well once again be careful of paint scratching and as you're moving the feet around this may pop off don't worry it's easy to pop back in the last point of articulation here we have the tail which you can push in and you can pull out to accommodate the flight mode. And unfortunately, it can't really wiggle around. You can get it to wiggle around, but it's not supposed to do that. So for articulation for Mecha Godzilla, very, very antiquated. Very, very old. Not something that we uh, should expect in this day and age. You can definitely tell that this design and the engineering is quite, quite old. But at the end of the day, it still works. Next up, we have the Garuda's articulation, and this is what caused the significant delay for the Super Mecha Godzilla review. How did that happen? Well, if you didn't see the delay video, I'll explain for you. So we have the cannons here. They're on hinges, and they move down just like that. That's it. It says in the instructions, and it points, and it suggests that maybe this is supposed to move. I don't know. We have the actual cockpit area that slides. Now, thrusters. These are all on ball joints. You can kind of see them here. Don't move them. On all three that I had, they were stuck in place whole bunch of people commented on the delay video. Oh, heat them up. They'll be fine. Nope. Blow dryer, hot water on the one that actually broke. Didn't really work. I tried it on the second Garuda that was going to get sent back. Didn't really work too well either. So at that point, I'm just going to say they're all misaligned. You know what? Just take it as it is. Do not risk breaking your Garuda. Just leave it. Doesn't matter how funky and screwed up they are, just leave it. So, articulation, eh, it's kind of there, and we have four unusable points of articulation. So, um, good job there. Now for accessories, where we get quite a few, but is it truly super? We get alternate hands to replicate the flying mode, an alternate stomach part for the plasma grenade, alternate back parts to swap the Garuda on and off, a Tamashi stage act for support base and arm, just a generic one, and of course the Garuda itself. That's it. Now, let's break it down. The alternate hands are easy to swap out. All you have to do is grip them at the base near the wrist, pull, and pop the new ones on. Now, these more straight hands with the fingers pointing straight forward do look a little iffy, if that's the word you want to use for the quality control, but it's in the smaller details, and to be honest, to go back again, that's kind of in the nitpicking territory. So if that's something that bothers you, then uh, good on you for that one. Next up, we have the plasma grenade, and you're going to have to be careful here. 
The recommended way is to pop off Mechagodzilla's torso, pop the abdomen off, add the new part, then pop the torso back on. Be extremely careful here because you're working with hard plastic and if you use too much force, you're too rough, you may break something, but at the same time, you need to put in effort in order to get it to work. To help make this process easier, I suggest removing the back portion where the dorsal plates are. Now, this plasma grenade part works, it truly does, but it's just kind of there for me, I don't know. I would expect something like translucent plastic to be used because it's an energy part, especially around this price tag. My own opinion there, but hey, what can you do? Now, we're going to take a look at the Garuda. So the Garuda in general looks a little yellow, off-white if you will, which is the same across all three of the ones that I've had. But in terms of quality of the decals and the paint application, it really ain't so bad. If you pretend it's a bit war-torn and the scratches and random sprays here and there are meant to be battle damaged. And to be fair, the Garuda does go through some rough stuff with Rodan prior to attaching to Mechagodzilla to create Super Mechagodzilla, so it's mostly forgivable. In this picture here, though, if you look at the thrusters, it's got a scratch on it. Yay! Something else of note, all three Garudas have a split right here on them causing separation, with me using the worst offender for pictures here to show this off. I mean, I want to give it a pass, and I'm using the worst example of the three, but yeah, this is consistent. And here's a basic comparison with the first Garuda release. And surprisingly, it's not that much different. In some areas, it's actually a bit better. Like the cannon nipples being a clearer plastic, the cannons actually being easier to move a bit more, same thing with the cockpit, and the parts to attach to Mechagodzilla are a bit easier to swap. So, I would say we break about even here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this is the better of the two Garudas. To use the support stand with the Garuda, just plug it into the hole on the bottom of the normal panels for the Garuda, and now it can zoom and fly away. And to use the Garuda with Mechagodzilla, you need to do some disassembling and reassembling. You'll need to fiddle with the bottom panels of the Garuda to take all the parts off as shown here, then you're going to have to add new parts to it so that way it fits Mechagodzilla's back well. Note it can be hard to initially pop everything off, and once you get the newer parts on, it can be a bit loose. But then again, once it's attached, everything should be fine. Next, for Mechagodzilla, swap the back dorsal plate part off, and pop the new one on with the pegs so this way it can support Garuda. Take the Garuda and gently but forcefully push the Garuda on so it's nice and secure, and there you go. Super Mechagodzilla is ready for launch. And that's it. So between the two original releases, since at this time Mechagodzilla hasn't been reissued, we get the Mega Buster Beam effect with a unique base for it, and then with the Garuda we got beams for it along with the shock anchors, which are actually compatible with this Mechagodzilla, along with an exclusive flight stand for the original Garuda. Yeah, for accessories, this set comes with less than what you'd get if you bought the original releases. Take that for what you will, but such is life. For the record, if that's the way you want to go, you can use the original Garuda with this Super Mechagodzilla, as shown here. So if you feel like spending another $70 or so on top of this for a more complete package, you can. Regardless, you're still getting dicked out of a flight stand for a figure that comes with parts to display it like it's flying. Size comparison time, everyone's favorite. Your average 6-inch scale figure here, he'll fit in well enough on your Godzilla shelf. Last up for this review, here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the original SH Monster Arts Mecha Godzilla. The head is slightly different with Super Mecha Godzilla having smaller teeth than the original. Notably, Super Mecha Godzilla has a brighter paint scheme with brighter eyes. Take note of the original Mechagodzilla here, and I'll admit I take some of the blame, it's kind of beaten up, but some of the die cast parts on the original have paint flakes that were kind of like that out of the box, and that's happened over time from being on display, including what looks like oxidization? I don't know, I'm not too sure here when it comes to die cast. And the Super Mechagodzilla has those hip covers, noting that again, yeah, I don't know. 
All in all, the Super Mecha Godzilla looks very nice, but I do have concerns in terms of longevity. But don't get me wrong here, in terms of looks overall, I do like Super Mecha Godzilla more. So, buy now, skip, or wait for that sweet deal. Super Mecha Godzilla's quality control really isn't that great, with consistent issues across all three of the ones I came across, though in some cases they were kinda small, in some cases they were huge. Articulation changes, though slight, are wonderful, but the lack of bicep swivels in 2017 sucks. Come on, are we going to have to buy another one? Are we going to get a 3.0 in two, four, five, seven years down the line? What's going on here? Accessories are the bare minimum to qualify for Super Mecha Godzilla, which is understandable to a point, but at the same time, this release kind of neutered the aftermarket prices for the standalone Garuda and the original Mecha Godzilla so you might be able to get the original releases for slightly more than this and get the whole shebang. At the end of the day, if you're looking to trade in your originals and upgrade, if you will, to Super Mecha Godzilla, you might as well just do yourself a favor and keep the originals. But if you don't have the original releases, then by all means, if you're still looking to get the Heisei Mecha Godzilla in the SH Monster Arts line, this is definitely the release to pick up. Just make sure you're not paying MSRP and you're paying about $95 or less. Well, that's it for this video, but that doesn't mean you need to close out just yet. There are a few other videos that just popped up on your screen, so go ahead and click on those to watch some more of my videos. And then there's the description to check out where I've linked to where you can get this figure or others like it and the credits to see how this video was made. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment and subscribe. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching, collectors, and I'll catch you in the next video.